Chapter 20, Destruction Slash Lifespans Dirk decided that he would attempt a destruction cycle. Learning the resonance was rather easy and only took a couple minutes, so he moved on to the hard stuff. Dirk sat at the chair of his desk with the book in front of him. Ava was sitting on his bed messing around with the man around her, training her technique. Suddenly though, Ava could see the anima around her fluctuate a bit, and she turned to Dirk. Dirk moved his hand over his forearm. He decided to destroy a section in the shape of a band going around his forearm. He could then move up and down his limbs, doing one ring at a time. After moving the anima over his forearm and concentrating it around it, he made it resonate. The anima fluctuated much faster and much more forcefully than the light resonation he did to saturate his body, and with it, he was hit with a wave of horrible pain. Arg! Dirk! Ava's eyes went wide when she heard him shout. Dirk ignored her though and concentrated on his arm. Damn! That hurts! He cried out in his mind. His teeth were gritting and his body was trembling a bit. The pain caused by the resonation made it feel like each of his cells were being burned alive. Except, Dirk had actually been burned before, and this pain was much worse than that. He couldn't understand how such pain was being caused. Except for that one shout though, he didn't make a sound. He was quiet as he trembled in his chair, his eyes slowly rolling back. Ava got worried and walked over, but when she did she was horrified. On Dirk's arm, there was a band of skin around the forearm that was cracking and disintegrating with black and red cracks. The hair had already disappeared, and now the layers of flesh were being broken and somehow skinned away. It was already raw, and the cracks were getting worse by the minute. H. Hey. Are you okay? I'm. Fine. Dirk barely spat his words out between gritted teeth. Ava just stood there, watching the skin on his arm get worse. She knew he wasn't fine, but those words told her that this was on purpose. At least, she didn't need to call for help. Yet. The process to destroy the skin lasted around ten minutes, after which Dirk stopped. He took slow breaths as the pain instantly lowered. The forearm now had a band of dark red cracks and raw skin. One could even see some of the muscle underneath. It looked like someone had burned the skin with a torch and then skinned the charred surface. It was not pretty. As he was calming down though, Dirk suddenly shot out of his seat and ran to the bathroom. Ava could hear the sounds of vomiting not long after, and she ran over. After going inside though, she stopped, looking at Dirk who was trembling while hugging a toilet bowl. She remembered how he would hold her hair back when she was throwing up and wanted to do the same for him, but he didn't have long hair to hold. After a second or two of thinking though, she kneeled next to him and rubbed his back in an attempt to comfort him. After several minutes, Dirk finally pulled away. He took slow, controlled breaths as his body regained its calm. Are you okay? Ava asked again, and Dirk nodded. Yeah. My body isn't used to intense pain and it was shocked a bit. I'll be fine. Dirk spoke as he looked at his arm. Back on Earth, he had plenty of experience with pain and knew how to push through it. Here though, his body hadn't experienced that yet, and he needed to teach it how to suppress instincts like throwing up. Not to mention, this pain was arguably worse than anything he had ever experienced. Luckily, this destruction and torture was a good tool to increase his tolerance. He could get used to pain again. Interface. Awaiting orders. Check my wound. Dirk gave a command to his AI. Every injury was automatically detected and dealt with, but he wanted a report on this new kind of wound. Unknown classification of wound around the forearm, similar to burns and radioactive destruction. No signs of random mutation. No risk of cancer. Nano repair bots currently sealing and promoting healing. Estimated time to heal, 6 to 9 weeks. Note 1, intake of nutrients recommended to help promote healing. Note 2, anima assisting in promoting healing and repair. Note 3, recommend acquiring medical serums to accelerate healing process. Ha, huh, so you know what anima is. Dirk pondered seeing the notes. It surprised him that the AI could detect the anima's involvement in healing. 
the second surprise was the time to heal. Around two months wasn't bad, but it was still quite a while. It looked like the destruction dealt thorough damage, and Dirk wouldn't be able to move as quickly as he thought. He doubted if he could destroy all his skin before he entered the academy. Well, getting done my feet and hands will be good enough. Then I won't be kept from doing anything. Though, I don't think I'll be able to get any medical serums to help with the process. He sighed when he thought about the serums. Back on Earth, the Nainites had supplies of serums to take care of anything. Some serums would protect his body from chemical attacks, and others would accelerate healing. However, he didn't have any of that now, and he was sure that this world had nothing like the serums. He didn't know where to even start in finding something that could help him. Em, do you need anything? I can go get you water. Ava asked. She knew that throwing up wasn't pleasant, and getting a bit of water in one's stomach could help with recovery. Dirk thought a bit before nodding silently. I'll be right back. Seeing him agree, Ava got up and ran out of the room. Dirk also staggered to his feet, going over to his bed and taking a seat. He meditated a bit so as to take control of his body. A minute or so later, Ava came back in with the Boda bag that he usually used while working out. However, it wasn't just her that came walking in. Cecilia followed behind her and took a look at her son. Cecilia walked over and saw the wound that wrapped around his arm. Having never actually seen a wound caused by the resonance technique, her face dropped upon seeing how horrible it was. The things she heard about how painful the technique was combined with the sight of it told her that it must have been excruciating. However, this also surprised her. Not only did she not hear any yelling, but Dirk was currently sitting calmly on his bed. Was it not as bad as she had heard? Ava told me you threw up. How's the wound? Cecilia asked as Ava handed Dirk the bag. He took a few gulps of water before answering. It hurt, but I'll get used to it after a couple more destruction cycles. I'm thinking about targeting my hands and feet soon so I can make them stronger before the academy. I see. Hang on. After making a decision, Cecilia turned and walked out of the room. Dirk watched her in confusion and drank some more water. Ava stood to the side and couldn't help but stare at the wound. She wondered if she could handle something like that herself. A few minutes later, Cecilia walked back in. In her hands was a brown case, and she set it on Dirk's desk before popping it open with a click. Dirk looked over and could see several flasks of liquid inside. She looked through the rows before picking one out and moving over to Dirk. This is a potion that can accelerate healing. Drink it, and that wound should heal up in about half of the time. Here. Saying that, Cecilia handed the flask to Dirk. The flask was made of glass, and Dirk could see a green liquid roiling around inside. He accepted it before taking off the cap and sniffing it. H.M., it doesn't smell so bad. Almost like tea. Surprised, he put the flask up to his mouth and downed everything in one go. When the liquid reached his stomach, his body started to heat up, and he got an alert from the AI. Alert. Healing substance detected. No harmful chemicals detected. Isolating substance for storage and direct application to wounds. Dirk looked at the notification and nodded inwardly. This was how the AI handled medical serums from Earth. All he would need to do was ingest it and the Nanites would absorb the serum, storing it for when he needed it. When he later got wounded, it would apply the serum directly to the wounds, making use of it in the most efficient way. It seemed like it could do the same thing with this mysterious potion. Dirk was pleasantly surprised as the Nanites ferried over the potion to the wound on his arm, applying it and allowing the accelerated healing to occur. One could see the raw skin on his arm turn slightly green, a result of the potion being released into his blood vessels and cells. Cecilia sighed. The next time you do a cycle, just be careful, okay? Especially when you do your hands and feet. Let me know when we can prepare for it. Oh, you can take this potion too. It'll help with the pain. She plucked out another potion, handing it to Dirk. This one was white, and Dirk didn't say anything as he drank it all too. At the same time, he gave a command to his AI. 
Interface, isolate the potion. It's a painkiller. Store it and don't administer it. Affirmative. Isolating painkiller potion and commencing deep scan of substance. With that, Dirk felt the liquid in his stomach disappear, none of it being infused into his system. He didn't need a painkiller, nor did he want it. He could save it for when he absolutely needed it. After Dirk drank the potions, Cecilia sighed. She didn't like how her son was walking down this path, but she had reluctantly agreed with her husband to let him at least try. If the time came where he couldn't handle it or he messed up, then she could try and get him another technique. That was the nice thing about anima techniques. One wasn't 100% locked in when they trained one. Seeing how Dirk wasn't in pain, Cecilia left with the box of potions. She could only wait until the next time he did another cycle. She already made a mental note to ask her husband to bring back some more potions. They had planned to already, but Dirk started faster than they thought. After she left, Dirk took another look at his forearm. Normally, a wound like this would leave a hideous scar. While he didn't particularly care about scars, he had to destroy all of his skin. He didn't want to come out of this looking like a monster. Luckily, the recovery promoted by Anima would erase scars and blemishes. Anima really makes things easy. Only, if the pain is supposed to get a lot worse every level you advance, I wonder how bad it will be at the later levels. It's already enough to hurt me pretty bad. I don't really want to imagine how bad it is when one destroys their bones. Dirk slightly shivered at the thought of pain many times worse than what he just experienced. Sure he was tough and wouldn't let pain stand in his way, but that didn't mean he enjoyed getting hurt. It still sucked, and sometimes he wondered if tough minds were a curse rather than a blessing. All right then. Time for mana lungs. He spoke and got comfortable on his bed. Meanwhile, Ava was stunned. You just tortured yourself with one technique, and you want to do the same with another? Did he even feel pain? She was starting to doubt if he did. Dirk didn't think much about it though. Things didn't change just because of something small like a destruction cycle. The only thing he did was rearrange his schedule. He no longer needed to do light resonance every day to increase his rank, but he couldn't do a destruction cycle every day either. He would just have to plan out what areas he would destroy and when he would destroy it. There was one other problem though, and that was his martial arts workouts with Ava. He couldn't quite start destroying the skin on his feet or hands as that would make practicing with Ava almost impossible. He wasn't keen on stopping the training he just started, so he decided he would just hold out on doing his hands and feet for a few months while they trained. He could always work on other areas. After that day, Dirk continued to go on with his schedule as normal. He and Ava would train martial arts every day, and she got progressively more proficient. Her kicks were fiercer. Punches were sharper, and Dirk even trained her in grappling, so she was able to do several different movements. After a few sessions, Ava also learned how to be intense with her blows, hitting with the intent to harm. She had been hesitant at first, and it took many beatings from Dirk to pull that ferocity out of her, but she was eventually able to do so herself. Dirk had effectively taught her how to be mean. This took time though. Dirk trained Ava for ten months. Those ten months though were enough to transform her into a totally different person. Now, Ava could yell, she could hit, she could be mean, and she learned how to stand with her shoulders back and head high. The shyness and pushover attitude she had in school was no longer there. Well, not totally at least. There was only one person that she was meek around, and that was Dirk. Ava had learned how to be tough in these ten months, but she had also learned how terrifying Dirk could be. His ability for combat and sheer force of will had baffled her many times over, and she knew she may never be able to catch up to him. It was unreal for a kid such as him to have what he did, but she didn't care how he came to be that way. All she knew was that he could put her on her ass with ease and no remorse. But she was okay with that. It was tiring, being tough. Sometimes she just wanted to be able to follow someone and be in their shadow, and Dirk was that perfect person. With him, she could simply listen and follow directions. He was direct, calm, and stable. She enjoyed that, albeit unconsciously. 
Besides martial arts, Dirk also went on to do some destruction cycles on his feet and hands. He had waited around five months, and in that time he did destruction cycles on his arms and abdomen. Each time, the area destroyed was large and the process was extremely painful. Cecilia had been horrified when she saw Dirk's entire abdomen cracked and raw. It almost looked like he had been gutted. Ava almost gagged at the sight as well. It had to be done though, and Dirk merely gritted his teeth. Each time he did a cycle, the pain got more bearable. And with the potions his parents gave him, he was able to shorten the healing time to about three weeks. He was also able to figure out how many cycles were necessary to complete destruction. In the case of his abdomen, Dirk had to destroy the skin four times over. The first time was the worst, but each time after that the pain was dulled. Since some of the skin was enhanced each time, the later cycles would destroy less and less. By the fourth time, Dirk only had a few cracks and tender skin. It only took a week to heal from that one. It was the same for the rest of the sections he destroyed too. Things would get progressively better after each cycle, making it rather easy on him. However, there was a lot of skin to destroy, and healing still took a good deal of time. While he wasn't restricted to only one section of skin at a time, he wanted to be able to function normally. This meant he only destroyed skin on one side of his body at a time so he could sleep without too much discomfort. He also couldn't destroy the skin of entire limbs otherwise he wouldn't be able to practice martial arts with Ava as well. Plus, his mother would get worried if he did too much, so he held back some. With all that, Dirk had destroyed the skin of his abdomen, arms, and the tops of his thighs in these ten months. During five, he had also decided to destroy the skin of one of his hands. Then on month seven he destroyed the skin of his other hand. By month ten, he had finished both his hands and was almost done with his left foot. Those months with only one hand to use was not fun. While he was pretty much ambidextrous, only having one hand was severely limiting. It was difficult to open things, and practicing with Ava became more challenging. It was like fighting her with an arm tied behind his back, something he actually had to do since he would occasionally grab her with the destroyed hand out of reflex. The feeling of raw and cracked skin pulling on fabric felt fantastic. He was pretty sure he pulled off a layer of skin doing that. Luckily, those days had passed. Not luckily though, he was now struggling to live normally with a destroyed foot. This was where he was at on month 10. Do you need me to dash? No, I'm fine. Dirk put his hand up, interrupting Ava. They were in his room, and she was offering to help him move downstairs to eat. Ever since he had done cycles of destruction on his foot, she had done some caretaking. It was the same when he was down hand. She just helped out where she could to make things easier for him. And while he appreciated it, he didn't really like being taken care of. He would make it work one way or another. Dirk launched himself off the bed and landed on his right foot. He then hobbled out of this room and down the stairs to the dining room. Ava followed closely behind, watching out in case he tripped so she could catch him. He soon got down to the kitchen and sat himself down. After Ava sat with him and food was served, Cecilia came walking in. The academy will be accepting in two months. Are you ready? She asked with a smile. Dirk was the last child to leave the house for the academy, and in these years prior, he had done a lot that would give him an edge. His physical fitness was unmatched, his pain tolerance was unbelievable, and he currently trained two of the best techniques in the world. Seeing how he was also ranked two, his progress proved to be quick. None of her children had ever been so ready to enter the academy, so Cecilia was very excited to see her son enter. If it had been up to her, she would have sent him two years ago. Dirk nodded as he stuffed some meat into his mouth. I'm not sure how much more I can prepare. If I had knowledge about what they did there, then I could do more. Don't worry, that question was rhetorical. You're definitely ready. What's your tear at? How has training your man a heart technique been? Cecilia asked, and Dirk thought for a second before his profile popped up. Profile Name, Dirk Strider Species, Human Tear, I+. Rank, 2. 
Attributes, Fire 71%, Lightning 89%, Earth 88%, Metal 93%, Dark 92%. Traits, Cybernetic Enhancement, Adaptable Genes, Pure Soul. Skills, AI Interface, Grade 7. He looked at his status and nodded. Having destroyed a lot of his skin, his rank was halfway to rank 3. He had also never skimped on his mana lungs training, but that progress was slower and he had yet to reach tier 2. He could feel close though. He felt like he was on some kind of cusp, and he knew it wouldn't be long before he reached the next tier. I'm at tier I+. Plus. My training is slow but steady. Training mana isn't a quick process. It's important to make sure your foundation is solid at each level, otherwise you'll be more prone to failure. A mistake while training or advancing could end your career or life, so never rush things. Understood. Good. You know, Rita is very excited to see you. They've all grown up, and you'll be the last one to enter. Let's see, Rita is 16, and you're going to be 12. Ethan is 18, and Viola is 20. Half my kids are grown-ups. Gosh, I feel old now. You growing up makes me feel even older. Cecilia spoke nostalgically, though Dirk didn't understand why she felt that way. From the time he was born to now, he had never seen Cecilia age at all. She looked like a woman around 28 years old, and not a year older. He didn't even know her actual age. Mother, how old are you? Are you really asking me my age? Cecilia narrowed her eyes at him a bit after he asked his question. Seeing that, Dirk shook his head, causing her to chuckle. Hoo-hoo, fine, I'll tell you. This year I turn 61. Your father is also 86 I believe? He's an elf hybrid so he ages even slower than I do. Sometimes I get a little jealous of his hair. It's so much silkier than mine. And then he has the audacity to cut it short. Cecilia complained a bit, but after hearing her age, Dirk was stunned. 61 years old? His father, who looked no older than 30, was 86. They should be getting wrinkles and white hair around that age. How did they still look 25? Dirk sat there staring into space attempting to figure out how that was possible. Cecilia saw his conflicted face though and answered his question. The higher power you achieve, the slower you age. Anima, especially, slows your aging to a great degree. I doubt your father will keel over for another 500 years. And while humans don't have such natural lifespans, someone like me will easily live for 400. I shouldn't see gray hairs until I'm 300. Even then though, your father will still look young. I'm thinking I'll have to drag him to the grave with me when my time comes. Can't have him touching other girls out of loneliness. Cecilia frowned as she ruminated about the future. Meanwhile, Dirk was stunned even more. He had a hard time wrapping his head around the concept of living for hundreds of years. One could see civilizations rise and fall during that time frame. It was a surreal thought. Chapter 21, Stigma Slash Academy This is your last one? Yeah, I think so. That's good. Any more and you would have a hard time getting to the academy. Ava smiled as she spoke with Dirk. They were currently in his room, and Dirk was preparing for a destruction cycle. Two more months had passed, and Dirk had finished his left foot. Now, he was on his right and hoping he would only have to do one more cycle. After getting comfortable on his bed, he started. He moved the anima over to the skin and began the resonation. The skin started to redden, and five minutes later there were a few shallow cracks. That was it though. Even continuing more, Dirk couldn't feel anything. The rest of his skin had been cycled through and wouldn't be destroyed under the resonation. He smiled seeing how little damage there was. Something like this could heal in a few days. Not only did Anima toughen and strengthen his body, it also made it recovery faster. Something that took a week now only took four days. This combined with his nanites and the potions he was fed made recovering very convenient. Looks like you'll be able to walk. Ava also nodded seeing the light damage. She had almost always been there to watch his cycles. 
she also saw how he became tougher after each one. The first cycle he trembled and had to vomit. But now, he could push through a first cycle with a mere grunt and frown. This kind of tenacity was insane to Ava. After finishing the cycle, the AI moved the Nainites to seal and begin repairing the wounds. The sealing made it so that nothing would get infected and the skin would be supported, preventing any more tearing. The AI had actually come to learn how to better handle Dirk's destruction wounds over time, optimizing the repair process. Though Dirk wasn't really aware of this. Seeing how the sealing was done, Dirk took the medical wrap next to him and wrapped his foot. This was more for show as his mother had ordered him to wrap his wounds to prevent infection. He didn't need to with his nanites, but he didn't really have a choice. He didn't mind though. It at least made things more comfortable. As he wrapped his foot, Ava stared at him for a bit before speaking. I won't be coming tomorrow. My parents need me to prepare for entering the academy. All right. Dirk simply nodded. The day to officially enter the academy was the day after tomorrow. Dirk obviously wouldn't insist that she arrive for training. He was surprised that she even came today. Will, we be seeing each other there? I don't know. I'm not even sure what we'll be doing there besides learning magic. Dirk shrugged. He didn't know much about the academy, let alone whether he and Ava would be seeing each other. He assumed they probably would since the place was only so big, but how often was a different question. Ava thought for a second before speaking. Well, I'll be looking for you. Depending on our schedules, we can keep training. Hmm. But in case we don't see each other, you should take the training by yourself when you can. I know you train anima, but you still lose stamina fast. You shouldn't have more than three day gaps between training. Just do the workouts we would normally do and you'll be fine. All right. But what about martial arts? That? I'm not sure. It's hard to train without a partner. Just work on fundamental striking movements and that should keep you sharp. The knowledge of martial arts movements don't go away so easily, and many movements should be reflex for you now. Ava nodded hearing that. Dirk's training had firmly engraved many fundamental techniques into her bones. She was capable of reacting properly on pure instinct now. Those instincts wouldn't wash away so easily, and doing fundamentals on her downtime would keep her refreshed. Just make sure not to forget your training. When the time comes for you to really fight someone, you need to keep yourself calm and use the moves you've been taught. I understand. It's not like we're going to war though. Ava brushed off his words a bit. Dirk shook his head though and spoke firmly. That's irrelevant. Two years ago, you were a timid mess incapable of standing for yourself. You had no knowledge or skills that could keep you safe and secure. Now, I've trained you to be strong in body and mind. No matter where you're at, you must be strong. In all situations and in all decisions, you must be strong. Wield the strength that you've earned otherwise it will be washed away by the people and environment around you. Am I clear? Crystal. Ava answered strictly, something she had been taught to do by Dirk. The next moment though, she thought a little more deeply about his words. She looked back and realized how far she had come. Her first day of school, she had struggled to even enter a classroom. Now, she was capable of holding her own in any conflict, and her confidence was high. She was no longer so self-conscious. It was as if she were a totally different person. Wield the strength that you've earned. Be strong in body and mind. Don't let it be washed away by the people around you. These words engraved themselves in her psyche, and she became a bit emotional. Dirk had given her a chance, and she had worked so hard. She didn't let him or herself down. She couldn't imagine where she would be if she hadn't met him. The thought of going into the academy and the outside world as a timid girl incapable of defending herself scared her, and she understood how priceless such a transformation was. Her eyes reddened a bit, and her mouth trembled as she spoke. Can. Can we hug? Hmm. Dirk's eyebrows raised a bit at her question, and he realized she was getting emotional. He didn't really understand why, but she was a girl, and like with his mother he stopped questioning why. 
thinking about it, he just nodded and stood up. He had taught her to ask questions outright, and if it were just this, he didn't mind. Seeing him agree, Ava moved in. The two hugged deeply, and Dirk could hear some light sniffles. Ava was shorter than him, so her face was buried in his chest. He wondered if he would have to wash his shirt. The two were like that for almost a minute as Ava calmed down. Eventually they separated, and she wiped her eyes. T thank you. Sure. She backed away with a red but content face. Dirk nodded before going back to the bed and beginning his man along training. Seeing him, Ava also sat on the bed and did some meditation. Though, she couldn't concentrate much as she thought about the future and what she would do if she didn't see Dirk anymore. Also, Dirk's effect on the surrounding mana was rather intense, making meditation difficult. Dirk didn't care though as he simply breathed in and out. By now, he was capable of dozens of breaths. Mana lungs was beginning to become more like actual breathing, the mana around him flowing freely from the environment into his soul and back out again. When he first started, breathing into the limit caused soul-tearing pain, and breathing all the way out would cause him to almost faint. But now, breathing into the limit only caused a dull pain, and breathing all the way out didn't make him so drowsy. He knew that his soul had gotten tougher, so as he pushed himself more, he became capable of doing the technique easily. Dirk seemed to be breathing mana normally for several minutes. Each time he breathed in and out, he felt like he could contain a tiny bit more mana than before. However, he had yet to actually step into Tier 2. He had felt like he was on the edge for almost a year now. It was getting a bit frustrating not advancing. Maybe I just need to practice this more. Since it's getting easier, I should try training throughout the day. Can't get better if I don't push myself. With that conclusion, Dirk continued to breathe. He wanted to be able to breathe mana just as he breathed air, so he set his new goal and worked on it. Please don't tell me you're actually going to work out. Do I not have time? Just relax, child. You can survive a day without training. We leave in two hours. Oh, and don't do any mana training either. You'll need to be in good shape for the test. Cecilia spoke as she shook her head. Today was the day that Dirk officially entered the academy. Initially, he didn't really mind that as he prepared to do his morning routine. His mom stopped him though, baffled that he would still think of such a thing when today was a big day. Hearing her, Dirk reluctantly returned to his room to wait for the two hours. In there, he decided to do some light exercises to get his blood flowing and pass the time. Nothing that would make him that tired, of course. He also did a few minutes of mana breathing. When the time to leave approached, Dirk dressed in a formal casual set of clothes. He had come to greatly prefer clothes that he could move around in as he never liked being restricted. Plus, he didn't have any formal clothes that fit him since he had grown so much and had no need for them. After dressing, Dirk went down to the entry hall right when he was supposed to. Cecilia was already there and nodded when she saw him. Dirk was always very punctual. The two then quickly boarded the carriage and drove off. Dirk, what tear are you now? While they were riding through the busy streets, Cecilia asked him. Dirk quickly answered. I'm still tear I plus dot. I see. Now, I'm not exactly worried about this happening soon, but I think I'll let you know about it anyway just in case. There's a certain thing that mages and warriors eventually come to form after rising in power. It's called a stigma, and you can think of it as a unique tool that's formed from the soul. It's rather rare to form one, but I have actually formed it, as has your father. This is my stigma. Saying that, Cecilia raised her hand. In it, a saber mysteriously appeared out of thin air. The saber was solid gray, but Dirk had a hard time seeing where the blade was located. It was like it did and didn't exist. Stigmata can come in many forms. Your father's stigma is that magic book you always see him carrying. A stigma can also be a cloak, an alchemical flask, a shield, a bow, a forging hammer, or a magic staff. There is no definite rule to what a stigma can be, and we only have general ideas about how they are formed. Generally, talented people begin to form their stigma around Tier 4. 
people who aren't talented won't form one at all, and they also don't tend to rise high in tiers. Warriors can also form a stigma after reaching a high enough rank. Again, the rules to form one aren't well defined, but it's agreed that only talented people will be capable of forming one. And you, my child, are a talented boy. Cecilia ruffled Dirk's hair proudly. You have three attributes, two of which are specialized. Most people only have one attribute, and it's rare to get two. Three is even rarer, and a four-attribute mage is something you may only hear about once in your life. You are a three-attribute mage, so you automatically have some talent. Should you develop smoothly, I have no doubt that you'll form a stigma of your own. Just know that if you begin to feel anything weird in your soul and start to feel an image take form, then it's likely you're stigma forming. I'm not sure when it'll be for you, but you could very well form it after reaching tier 3. Or rank 3 if you get there first. If you have any questions, you can also ask your father. After all, he'll be at the academy. Understood. Dirk memorized all the words she said. This stigma thing sounded interesting but he hadn't yet felt anything taking form. It looked like he would have to give it time and simply keep an eye out. The next moment though, he thought of something. What was his mother going to do while he was gone? Was she going to stay in the house by herself? Mother, what will you be doing after I enter? Me? I've been thinking about that recently. I might just go live with your father in the academy since that's basically become his home. H.M., I still have to take care of my plants though. I don't know. I'll have to think about it more. All I know is that you probably won't be seeing home for a long while. Your siblings all live in the academy, except for Viola who has gone off on her own dungeon expedition to further her power. I believe Ethan is also joining the military, so he'll be leaving soon. There isn't much for you back home anyway. Everything you need is in the academy. Cecilia hugged her son as she said that. She was both happy and sad that he was moving on. She was mostly excited though. Her son couldn't be more ready, and she looked forward to what he achieved in the future. Soon, the two arrived at the plaza outside the academy walls. The place was filled with people, all of them parents and children who were entering. Dirk and his mother exited the carriage and walked into the plaza. They kept an eye out for Riker who was supposed to come get them. Dirk! Ah! What the? Dirk's head snapped around when he heard a shrill shout. He could see Rita running toward him, but as he watched her approach, his pupils contracted. Occasionally as she ran, she would suddenly disappear in a black fog and reappear a few meters away. She did this consecutively to weave through the crowds of people, and Dirk almost threw out a punch when she teleported almost right in front of him. It took all his self-control to refrain from doing anything as she dove into him. Ah! Look how big you've gotten! Oh, and strong! How are you? Rita hugged him tightly while he stood there and took it. Seeing how much Rita had grown, Dirk could only smile. Rita was now sixteen and a bit taller than Dirk. She was a slim but developed girl with a stunning face and gorgeous black hair that seemed to be illusory. Also, he could feel intense power from her. Seeing through his mana sense, she simply looked like a dense ball of chaotic dark energy. He didn't know what happened, but she had become seriously powerful since he'd last seen her. After evaluating her progress, Dirk smiled a bit. I'm doing fine. How are you? Good. Very good. You are going to love the academy. I'm already tier 5. You also have perfect affinity for the dark element. Suddenly, a deep voice came from behind. Rita turned around to see her dad smirking at her. Oh, hi dad. Ah. Uh, what did I tell you about void walking in public? To not. Yeah. You haven't mastered it, so don't go zipping around all over the place. I'm good enough though. I at least won't hit anybody. Rita spoke with a bit of injustice. Riker just shook his head. I don't care. Spatial magic isn't your forte and it's not a joke. A single slip and you'll kill someone with a spatial ripple. I understand. 
Rita's mood was dampened under Riker's scolding. He just rolled his eyes at her and turned to his son. Are you ready, kid? From today onward, you'll be a mage and body refiner. They train both in the academy, so you won't be missing out on anything. Yes, sir. Dirk answered with a bit of excitement. He had been looking forward to this day for a long time. All those days of slogging through school was for this very moment. All right then. Since you're my son, you won't have to worry about getting in line and going through all these procedures. Before that though, say bye to your mother. You might not see her for a few days. Bye mom. Dirk nodded and turned around, giving his mother a hug. She hugged him tightly before letting him go with a kiss on the forehead. Okay. Follow me you too. Riker walked off, and Dirk and Rita followed him. Cecilia watched them walk off for a bit before turning around herself. Taking a step, darkness enveloped her and she disappeared. After walking off, Riker took Dirk inside the academy. They walked straight through the gates and off to a large building that looked something like a gymnasium. After walking in, they were greeted with a small crowd of people. There were several different stations with short lines behind them, and children around Dirk's age were all getting tested for something. This is the testing area. All your information is already processed, so you only need to get tested for your ability to control mana. All you need to do is place your hand on the ball and inject mana into it. Reach a certain threshold, and you'll be cleared. The farther you go, the better your rating. Though, that doesn't particularly matter for you. You'll be put into the class I've set aside for you anyway. Now go ahead and wait in line. Understood. After Riker patted him, Dirk went over and got in one of the lines. None of the kids talked to each other as they stepped up to the table one by one. The atmosphere was tense for them, but Dirk didn't particularly feel nervous. He was rather confident in his ability to control mana. Eventually, Dirk stepped up to the table. There was a man who looked to be in his fifties behind the table, though with Dirk's new knowledge about lifespans, he couldn't tell how old he was. He could be four hundred years old for all Dirk knew. What's your name? Dirk Strider. Strider. All right. Twelve years old, Terai Plus. Okay, I want you to put your hand on the ball and inject your mana into it. Simply sending it through the ball will do. The more mana you stream into it, the higher your rating. Do as much as you can, but don't hurt yourself. As long as you reach the minimum you'll have passed. Any questions? No. Then put your hands on the ball and start when you're ready. After shaking his head, Dirk looked down at the crystal ball near the edge of the table in front of him. The ball had slash marks on it, and each mark had a different number next to it. The bottom slash had the number zero on it, and the slashes numbered up to ten which was at the top of the ball. It looked like one had to literally fill the ball with mana. The stand that the ball was on also had I plus engraved on it, probably signifying that this ball was used for those who were tier I plus. Dirk didn't think too much though before putting a hand on it and sending through some mana. The element he chose was the dark element, and after it entered the ball, black liquid appeared and filled some of the ball. It looked like he was dumping water into it. Seeing how this worked, Dirk finally went full force. The ball seemed to consume his mana and convert it to this liquid, so he simply had to feed it to increase the level. He dumped copious amounts of mana into the ball, and it quickly surged past the halfway mark. To the side, Rita was watching with gleaming eyes. In her vision, the dark element around Dirk was flooding into him and being sent into the ball. She had never seen such a technique, and she wondered how he could so fluidly bring in mana like that. If she attempted that, her soul would scream in pain. Meanwhile, Dirk started to feel fatigued after pushing the liquid past the number 9 mark. He didn't let it bother him though as he utilized the mana lungs technique to pull in and push out mana. The technique was very efficient, and soon enough, he had totally filled the ball with that black liquid. When the ball didn't accept his mana anymore, he stopped and pulled his hand away. He still had a bit of energy left in him too. Wow. All right then. Congrats Dirk Strider, you've earned a level 10 grade. Go ahead and step to the side. 
Understood. Thank you. Of course. The man behind the table nodded to him with surprised eyes. Dirk simply stepped out of line as the ball on the table drained of the black liquid, leaving no evidence of the previous result. Chapter 22, Tour Hey! How did you do that? After Dirk returned to his father and sister, Rita exclaimed and pointed to the table he came from. Dirk shrugged nonchalantly. I just fed it with manna. And do you not feel tired at all? It took most of my energy, but not enough to make me pass out. Well that's insane. I know you're only a tier one, but... Your sister was only able to get a nine on her test, and it took everything she had. After snapping out of his surprise, Riker spoke. The minimum to pass is five, and that's also where a significant portion of students land. I would say that 60% of students land between five and six. The rest are dispersed between seven and nine. Only the topmost can reach ten. Even then though, it's not guaranteed to see someone reach ten every year. We might see a few in a ten-year time span. I didn't expect you to be able to reach it. Good job. Riker patted his son's shoulder. Meanwhile, Dirk was surprised about how difficult it was to get a 10. Also, he was surprised by the fact that he still had energy. If he really pushed himself, he might be able to go to an 11 or 12. This made him wonder if reaching 10 was actually that impressive. He couldn't believe that people would have such a hard time getting a high number. He had passed number 6 with but a thought, only utilizing his technique to push higher. Despite having achieved something impressive though, Dirk didn't think much of it. He knew how far away he was from someone like his father. His mother was the same. Dirk was still a weak, helpless child. He wouldn't get an inflated ego just because of a small success like this. When Riker saw that his son didn't even get a bit excited over his impressive feat, he chuckled a bit and shook his head before walking over to the man at the table. After an exchange of words, the man handed Riker the sheet with Dirk's evaluation on it. All right, we're done here. Congratulations, Dirk. You are now an official student of the Academy of Magic. I've already entered you into your classes, and all your school items are at your new residence. How about we head over there? Saying that, Riker turned and led the three out of the gymnasium. After walking a bit, they came upon an area to the side of the school. This place had large rectangular buildings that looked not unlike apartments. They were rather nice and tidy. Of course, everything that Dirk saw in the academy was nice. It seemed like a very rich school, and the fact that it was in the capital meant it was likely one of the richest institutions in the entire empire. The three didn't stop at these apartment buildings though and walked past them toward a plot of land with many small houses on it. Each house was two stories tall, but they weren't very wide. Despite being two stories, it only seemed like enough for a few people. They walked down a road for a bit before stopping at one of the average houses. It didn't look that outstanding compared to the others, but it also wasn't shabby in the slightest. Remember where this is, because this here is your new residence. These are the nicest places in the academy besides the teacher and staff houses. You'll be living here alone for the foreseeable future. Of course, that isn't to say that nobody can visit. Come on. Riker introduced the house before walking inside. Dirk and Rita followed, and they took a tour of the place. The first floor didn't have any walls, looking like a studio apartment. There was a table and two chairs for dining, a standard kitchen, and a living space with a couch. Then there was a staircase leading up to the second floor and one leading down into some kind of basement. The three looked around before heading up. The second floor held a hallway with two doors. The main bedroom was simple. There was a bed, a bathroom, a nightstand with a clock on it, and a closet for clothes. It was rather empty with no decorations or unnecessary items, but Dirk found it nice. He wasn't one for fancy things anyway. As for the second bedroom, it was basically identical. Dirk would only be using his extra space though. Then, the three headed back down and went into the basement. The door leading into the basement was metal and much more secure than even the front door to the house. 
while it was already unlocked, Riker explained to him that it used a magic code to open and that he could set the code later. Entering the basement, Dirk was greeted with a dense mana environment. The room had nothing in it, not even a chair. Riker explained its desolation. This is a place where you can come to meditate and practice magic. And, should you get into alchemy, enchanting, or smithing, you can get tools and stations to put in here. Think of this as a magic workshop for all your magical needs. Dirk nodded. The mana in this room was nice, and while he didn't really need it right now, he was sure it could help him in the future. Forming his first mana heart required dense mana, so this room would help with that. As for whether he would pursue any of these crafting professions, he would have to think about it. Now, a few things you need to know. You'll have to take yourself to classes every day. As for food and supplies, they'll be delivered to you every five days. I've already arranged for you to be brought meats and other foods. I guess now's the time where you also need to learn how to cook. Cooking is an important skill to know. As for visitors, anybody can come or go at any time. The academy doesn't monitor your every action. However, as your father, please exercise self-control when it comes to girls. You're going to hit puberty soon and I know how tempting it can be to bring a girl back home, especially when you live alone. But until you're an adult, I don't want you getting into any relationships, at least not any serious ones. Magic comes first, understood? Yes sir. Dirk answered dully. Was he really getting the talk? Self-control wasn't an issue for him. He could keep raging hormones in check. After all, he had to do it in the super soldier program. However, since the topic was brought up, Dirk thought about it a bit more. What was a relationship like? He had never gotten involved with anyone before, and liking someone was a foreign concept to him. Even Ava was just a friend. What if he started to like someone? What did it feel like to have someone that liked you? Dirk was curious, but also apprehensive. He didn't forget that he was only twelve here. Getting into a relationship with anyone his age would be weird for him. Dirk pondered, but he didn't let it show on his poker face. Seeing him respond so bluntly, Riker smiled. Anyway, that's the housing situation. Here's the keys. Keep them in a safe place, and don't give them to anyone. You're actually only getting this house because your mother said you could handle the responsibility. Usually I would have you put into a dorm with one or two others. Oh. That reminds me. I have a certain rule that all your siblings abide by at the academy. Remembering something, Riker spoke seriously. Dirk straightened subconsciously. In the academy, there's going to be many conflicts. They can be political, verbal, or physical. This place is one of competition, so fighting is only natural. However, there are a few people who will wield the statuses of their parents or teachers to oppress others. None of my children are going to be one of those people. So, I don't care what happens, you will not use my name or the Strider family name as you please. You will solve your own conflicts by your own power. The only time when you can use my name is when you are in mortal danger but even then my name won't necessarily be a valid option to use. Do you understand this rule? Yes, sir. Good. Now, this rule also comes with its perks. Because your father has a high status as a Marquis, you don't need to worry about bowing down to those very kids who attempt to wield their status. Again, you solve conflicts by your own power, and there's nothing that can stop you from fairly beating someone. Basically, I'm solving all the political conflicts automatically. You only need to worry about the physical and verbal ones. All right, enough of that. Let me take you on a tour through the school. Tomorrow there's an entrance ceremony, and you'll also need to know where your classes are. Saying that, Riker spun around and left the house. Dirk and Rita followed, and they went on to explore all the various facilities throughout the school. First, Riker took him to all of his classes. This year, Dirk was enrolled in five classes. The first was general education where they taught him things like history, advanced mathematics, world studies, and more. The second was his body refining class where they were taught combat arts and trained to increase their stamina and endurance. 
After that, there was one class for each of Dirk's dark, earth, and fire elements. He would be learning spells and rune theory in those classes. They would also serve as time to accumulate mana and train one's technique. These classes took up a lot of his day. From 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. he would be in classes, totaling nine hours of class time and one for a lunch break. This was a pretty long time to be in class, but Dirk didn't really mind. He wanted to learn the things they were teaching. Plus, this still left him with enough time to work out before and after class. As for training his mana technique, he could do that throughout the day and just before he went to sleep. After some thinking, Dirk was able to revise his daily schedule and pleasantly found that he could maintain the things he'd been doing. And since he had already finished destroying the skin of his hands and feet, he didn't need to worry about being partially disabled. He could continue doing destruction cycles and simply deal with the pain it would cause. That reminds me, I gotta move on to my legs and finish off my upper body. After that though, I'll need to do my head and face. That's not going to be fun, but oh well. Dirk shook his head at the inevitable scene he would cause. He couldn't get out of destroying anything, and the last things he needed to do were the lower body and the skin from his neck up. For the lower body, he would have to deal with the skin on his but being destroyed for a while. That would hurt when sitting, but at least it was hidden. But his face? He would go bald and look like a hideous monster for a few weeks. He couldn't avoid it though. All he could do was either get a mask or only do one half of his face at a time. After Riker took Dirk to his classes, he moved on to some other facilities. The first place was an arena, and it was a coliseum like building that students could battle in. Apparently, the school held tournaments every six months for student rankings. Each class would fight amongst themselves, forming something of a hierarchy. It was the most participated in event in the school, and there was no lack of students wishing to test their skills and rise on the leaderboard. After they toured the Colosseum, they went on to the Magic Pyramid. In this pyramid, students could go and look at all kinds of different spell books, practice runes, practice spells, or simply meditate in peace. The place was a literal pyramid where the higher you went, the higher the mana density. Just the bottom layer held mana as dense as the one in Dirk's magic workshop at his house. While he couldn't go higher, both Riker and Rita assured him that it was many times denser up there. Riker had even been to the top, and he said it felt like swimming in a pool of liquid mana. In the pyramid were also some rooms and open firing ranges. These rooms and ranges could be used to test one's spells and techniques on test dummies. Then there was the library with many magical books, and meditation rooms where one could get absolute peace and quiet. Riker said that people often used those rooms to advance in tears since they couldn't be distracted. You could also hold a single room for up to two months at a time. Lastly, Riker brought Dirk to the Halls of Artisans. This place was the center of all magical production in the academy. All enchanting, forging, and alchemy took place here, and as soon as they entered, Dirk was hit with a wave of magical elements and boisterous yelling. Hey! I need two iron ingots and a bucket for oil. And when I find who took my bucket, I'm gonna roast their ass in my furnace. Where are my herbs? You! Get me three spiked leaves right now. I've got 73 seconds before this pot explodes. Somebody please tell me where the damn tongs are. How about you just pull the metal out with your bare hands? You dimwit! Ah! Who the hell took my lucky pair of goggles? Dirk was stunned as he saw people shooting between dozens of different rooms. On the right side of the hall, he could feel heavy heat and see black smoke seeping between doors. On the left, he could smell dozens of different herbal scents and see white smoke seeping between doors. The contrast between the two sides of the hall was painfully obvious. Welcome to the Hall of Artisans. Everyone pursuing one of the crafts goes here to practice and produce. On one side you have the alchemists, and the other is the blacksmiths. In the back are the enchanters but there are less of them since enchanting is rather difficult. The two sides coexist in a strange harmony of understanding and trade. They are divided into two different factions, but the two sides trade what they make very often. The alchemists give the blacksmiths many potions, 
and the blacksmiths give out many forged goods like weapons or armor or whatever else is made. This helps both of them output more and promote something of an economy. It's not easy getting into one of the factions, but it is definitely worth it. Artisans can make good money, and many artisans have the ability to simply make what they need, saving them lots of money as well. I think you should try your hand at it next year. Riker introduced the place and recommended Dirk to it. Dirk just looked around for a long while. He wondered why it was so chaotic instead of quiet and orderly. Didn't people have to concentrate while crafting? Why were people yelling for last-second things? He also could have sworn that he saw a teenager run out of a room with a boiling pot of something. Did he seriously leave his station midway? Dad. Why is everyone going crazy? Dirk asked the question on his mind. Because it helps develop concentration. One needs to be able to adapt to things on the fly, and if you get easily disturbed, you won't be able to go far in your craft. You have to be able to operate in all kinds of situations. Like that boy who left his station with his solution halfway boiled. He needed materials, and didn't have anyone to rely on, so he simply brought the pot that he couldn't take his eyes off of to the warehouse where the herbs are. Granted, he probably should have done better preparations, but then again, who knows if this is his fourth go at it. Maybe he ran out of only one herb and didn't realize it while he was focusing. But he was able to think of a quick solution, and that batch may not necessarily be a failure. Quick thinking is a precious skill. This helps hone that. Dirk stayed silent as he deliberated on whether or not he agreed with the methodology. Quick wit was indeed precious, and he guessed that this would indeed help train that. Still though, he was baffled by how chaotic it all was. Though, it also looked kind of fun. He made a mental note to check out the crafts in the future. Anyway, keep this place in mind for the future. Although you probably won't be able to do alchemy very well since you don't have the water attribute, you should be able to do forging. I'll scratch alchemy off my mental note then. Dirk shrugged helplessly. The three left the Hall of Artisans soon after talking a bit more. For the most part, Riker had given Dirk a pretty thorough tour. He wouldn't even be stepping foot into some of the places until next year. This year, he just needed to stick to his classes and build up his foundation more. That was the main purpose of the first year in the academy. Eventually, Riker took Dirk back to his residence and left. Rita though decided to take him to her place so he knew where it was. There, he ate lunch and talked with Rita about the years they hadn't seen each other. Rita had matured a lot. While she was still a pretty happy-go-lucky person, Dirk could tell by her demeanor that she had grown up quite a bit. That's what it took though to wield more power. However, when Rita started talking about her experiences with dungeon diving, Dirk got interested. You remember the dungeons you read about in school right? Rita asked as she twirled a glass of water. The glass was levitating above her hand while her dark mana coddled it. Dirk nodded to her. I do. Good. Don't forget them, because you're going to be visiting plenty. Your first year here will be teaching you all about applied magic, general essential knowledge, and how to fight. Basically, they're preparing you for the coming years. Next year is the first year where you'll finally fight and kill something. In fact, there's an initiation ceremony where everyone has to take the life of a monster with their own skills. From then on, you have the option to enter the dungeons and fight real monsters. There, you'll be able to gain combat experience, collect loot, make money, and so on. It's very popular since everyone needs to make money, and that's both the easiest and hardest way to do it. Interesting. Do you dungeon dive? Dirk asked curiously. He was definitely interested in the dungeons. Yes, I dungeon dive. I actually have a party that I dive with. We've been working together for two years now. In the team, I'm the magic caster. I can apply various curses to monsters and deal direct damage. I gotta say though, I honestly regret not taking your offer to work out when we were kids. I've gotten injured several times simply because I wasn't flexible or nimble enough or when we would need to run away, I would quickly lose stamina. That's why I've been working on that void-walking magic you saw me do. 
It's a great way to move without consuming lots of stamina. Seriously a real lifesaver. I've gotten better though. Anyway, I'm sure you'll be dungeon diving too, and I just want you to be mentally prepared for it. Though, there's also something else I should warn you about. Rita spoke seriously. You need to think carefully about how you develop your combat ability, who you meet, and what you do with your skills. While the academy encourages us to fight in the dungeons, that's only to hone our skills. Remember that we live in an empire, and the empire wants talented people working for them, killers or otherwise. Ethan chose a life in the military, and soon enough, he's going to be on a battlefield somewhere fighting actual people. Many people in the academy choose that life because they have nothing else to do when they leave. I just need you to understand that the academy is yet another bubble like the school we went to. You'll eventually have to decide whether you want to live a life of killing monsters or people. Both are dangerous and have their struggles. But I don't want you getting sucked into one without you knowing it. Alright? I understand. Dirk nodded solemnly, though inwardly he was smiling bitterly. How could he not understand that wars were fought, and nations wanted talented killers? He definitely understood far more about that reality than Rita did. Chapter 23, First Day While Dirk already understood the dark reality of war, he also started seriously contemplating Rita's words. When faced with the choice, would he go back to the life he lived? Or would he shut himself in these dungeons and hunt monsters for a living? Thinking about it, Dirk actually started having a bad feeling. In his last life, he didn't get a choice. In this life, he wondered if he would. He had always been some kind of symbol for bad luck. But he had never been able to figure out if he was the unlucky one. He didn't know if he wanted to go back to the life of fighting day after day. He could kill, and he could do it very well, but did he want to? He had fought for a leader that only saw him as a pawn to be played, a disposable dog to take care of the dirty work. The only thing special about him was that he was a strategic weapon capable of taking care of nearly any task. He was just a really strong dog. Now though, he had more of a choice. If he absolutely didn't want to, Dirk didn't need to fight anybody. Worst case, he left home, disappeared, and started a life tending to a farm or something like that. However, when he thought about living a life of mediocrity like that, he couldn't see himself doing it. He wasn't drawn to it. For once, he wanted to do something that he at least agreed with. He wanted to exercise his ability to do something, good. After all, he knew how dark humanity could be. Thinking about all the people that he was capable of helping, he couldn't shut himself away. But at the same time, he couldn't help everyone, and he wouldn't kill himself for justice. Justice was always a tricky thing in his eyes. It changed, and because of that, he couldn't define what justice was to him. Dirk had many conflicts in his head. He didn't know where he belonged. Did he belong in the dark? Did he belong on the battlefield? Did he belong in a dungeon? Should he kill people? If he did, what kind of people were good or bad? Did he have the right to judge people? Could he define good and bad? And what about his own freedom? Would he allow himself to be leashed by some rules again? The questions boggled his mind, and he became frustrated when he couldn't answer them. For once in his life, he didn't have a set direction. However, all that would have to be dealt with in the future. For now at least, he had things he needed to do, like magic classes. He could slowly figure out his purpose over time. Dirk hung out at Rita's house and ate dinner there, after which he left and went back to his own house. Unlocking the door with his fancy new keys, he entered the desolate living space. Well, he thought it would be desolate, but after flicking on a light, he could see luggage strewn throughout the room. He walked over to the dining table that had a note on it. It was from his mother, and it said that this was all his stuff from the house. There was also a case of healing potions for him to use. It ended by telling him to be careful. Dirk smiled after reading the note. He cast the spark spell to burn it before turning and bringing his luggage upstairs. After situating everything, he washed up before heading to bed. Beep, beep, beep. Dirk's eyes flew open when he heard an alarm. Looking at the time, 
he saw that it was 5 a.m. He took a deep breath before hopping out of bed. It was time to work out. Rinsing himself and putting on a pair of shorts and shoes, Dirk walked out of his house and into the cold morning air. The sun hadn't yet peeked over the horizon, so everything was still dark. Dirk didn't mind it though. He had memorized the layout of the school, and his eyes were more sensitive to light than normal as per his cybernetic enhancements. He could see fine and already knew the route he would take on his run. With a direction, Dirk ran onto the street that wound through the neighborhood. Soon, he left the neighborhood and ran past the apartments, maintaining a single, steady pace. After the apartments, he ran across the front of the school. Then, he ran around to the Colosseum, passed it to the Magic Pyramid, down toward the Hall of Artisans, and then back to the neighborhood. This route was a loop that essentially circled the school, and it was a whole six miles long. Dirk did three laps before going back to the house and beginning his bodyweight exercises. By the time he was finished with that, it was 8 a.m. The entrance ceremony was at 9, so he prepared himself to go. He washed up, ate some food that had been put into a cooler before by his father, and got dressed. He left for the Colosseum 15 minutes before the start of the ceremony, and as he walked, he pondered over his workout. Things are starting to get easier and easier. I can deactivate my nanites to prevent them from giving me more energy and recovering quickly, but anima is starting to show its effects. I'm simply stronger, faster, and have more stamina. Soon enough, these workouts aren't even going to be enough to get me tired unless I go for several hours. I should see if I can find any way to fix that. Dirk had been thinking about this issue for a while now, and finally, it was starting to become a problem. He could run for several miles as a warm-up, and he was forcing himself to go faster and faster just to get himself tired. Plus, the fact that he didn't have weights meant that he had nothing to push his muscles to the limit with. Dirk was approaching the stamina of his past life. While his strength wasn't there yet, it wasn't far. He would easily reach it in a couple more years just by growing. Anima was just that miraculous. He hoped though that the academy would have a solution to his problem. There was no way that someone in this world before him hadn't had and dealt with his very problem. And since the academy was so amazing, they had to know of a way to help. Dirk would be shocked if they didn't. Well, I have a class for it, so let's just wait for that. With that, he put the thoughts to the back of his mind and looked around. Since the ceremony was about to start, there were crowds of people around him of all ages and sizes. Everyone was flooding to the Colosseum as well, and the atmosphere was exciting. After all, everyone here was accepted into the academy. For the New Bloods, they were thrilled to have been accepted by such a prestigious institution. For the veterans, they were focused on working even harder toward their goals. Everyone had something to do here and a goal to achieve. Dirk simply made his presence faint as he blended into the crowd. Since he was only twelve, he was rather small and capable of slipping through places. After a bit of maneuvering, he passed through the entrance to the Colosseum. Walking through the gates, he saw signs that designated where the students of each year sat. He quickly found the first-year sign and followed it up to the seating area where he found a random seat and sat down. It looked like there were already a few hundred students around his age there. Dirk guessed they were his classmates. Please take your seats. There are three minutes until the ceremony starts. Suddenly, on the stage of the Colosseum, a woman behind a podium spoke into a magical device that amplified her voice. Hearing it, the crowds entering and mingling around the place quickened their paces. In only a few minutes, nearly all of the empty seats had been filled. When things had fallen into place, the woman walked up to the podium again. The Colosseum quieted as everyone sensed her presence. She was a beautiful woman wearing some fancy robes that did nothing to hide her curves, and all the pubescent boys near Dirk were eyeing her like a nice slab of meat. Welcome everyone. I congratulate you all for being accepted into the Horizon Magic Academy. Out of the thousands upon thousands of applicants across the empire, only you all were chosen. This is a high honor, and I hope you all do your best to make the most out of every day. For the dawn of Horizon. For the dawn of Horizon. The Colosseum reverberated the woman's pledge, 
creating a large echo. Dirk just watched on. You can't have a strong nation without some nationalism. He had also learned these basic pledges and salutes. The woman went on to say a short speech about how lucky all the students are and how they needed to push themselves so as to become powerful individuals worthy of respect. This went on for around ten minutes before she finally passed on the mic. Now, without further ado, let me set the stage for our headmaster. Duke of the Empire and Tier 8 Magus, put your hands together for Headmaster Hillshire. Hmm. Hearing that name, Dirk perked up as the crowd roared with cheers. He looked down and saw Duke Hillshire step on stage. Clad in royal robes, he stood and smiled valiantly while looking through the crowd. Seeing the headmaster look upon them with fond eyes and an encouraging smile, all the new students were instantly drawn to like him, and the returning students cheered for him even more. From the almost fanatic cheers, it seemed like the entire academy idolized this man. The instant the duke put his hand up, the entire crowd quieted. Dirk was instantly baffled. Who could command this kind of respect and reverence? It was like the duke was actually the king. Thank you all for your warm welcome. You may simply call me headmaster. Like the lady before me, I congratulate you all on successfully entering the academy. Here at the academy, you all will struggle, experience hardship, and claw your way to a more powerful existence. The road is long and hard, but I assure you that I will do everything in my power to open up the largest road for you all. While we may compete and fight here in the academy, at the end of the day, we are all brothers and sisters brought together through the pursuit of a higher purpose. You will be seeing a lot of me throughout your days here, and that's because I'm here to help each and every one of you. I don't ask that you treat me as the headmaster, but as a teacher here to guide you. If strength is what you desire, and you wish to be men and women who bring good into the world, then I will show you that path. Simply follow me, and together we will forge a path to greatness. The Duke spoke with deep and bold words full of spirit. The kids throughout the stadium were mesmerized, and nobody made a peep. When he finished, the place was quiet for several seconds before cheering erupted even louder than before. Dirk sat there silently though. This man really is one for the people. No wonder they love him so much. Though, if anyone were to be a good headmaster, it would be him. He loves raising children. Dirk thought back to the two times he visited the Duke. The first time, he had gotten a good idea of how much the Duke loved kids. Later, his father told him that the Duke had been trying to have children for over 80 years with his wife. In all that time, they have had 19. From that, one could easily see how kid-crazy the Duke was. When Dirk thought about it, it made sense that he was the headmaster of such a school. The man was accomplished, strong, and loved being a mentor. Who better to run the academy? Though I'm surprised father is brothers with him. I wonder how they came to get so close. At least I know why father works at the academy now. Dirk's thoughts moved about as the Duke went off the stage. After him, many other staff members introduced themselves to all the students. None of them particularly cared though. It seemed like the headmaster was the only one with all the attention. The rest were bland compared to him, no matter how amazing they tried to make themselves look. After almost an hour, the speeches finally came to an end. By this time, all the students simply wanted to get on with the day. Luckily, after the beautiful lady came back on stage, she sent them off with a brilliant smile. Dirk took a deep breath as he stood up with all the other students. He walked quickly and was one of the first to exit the Colosseum, dodging the crowds that already started building up. Instead of walking home though, Dirk turned to the main building of the academy where all the classes were. Today, the schedule was modified, but they all still had class. Dirk made his way to his first class which was general education. The corridors were mostly empty as Dirk walked with steady steps. His feet made no more than a faint tapping sound as they stepped on the solid wood flooring. The wood under his feet was almost pitch black, contrasting with the white stone walls. When Dirk arrived at the classroom, he walked through the door that was already open. Inside, the teacher was sifting through papers on her desk. She didn't lift her head even when Dirk walked up to her desk. Teacher? What? 
the woman was startled and jerked backward, flicking her pen at Dirk. His body automatically bent to the side and his hand reached out and grabbed it. He settled back in his original position the next second like nothing happened. Who? You? Who are you? My name is Dirk Strider. I believe I'm one of your students. Dirk spoke simply, and the teacher's heart settled down. She took a deep breath before taking out a roster and looking through it. Sigh, I see. Sorry Dirk. I didn't see you come in. Ah, you can take a seat wherever you wish. You're the first one, so you get first pick. Thank you. Here's your pen. Oh, thanks. The teacher took the pen from Dirk's outstretched hand. As he went to go pick a seat though, she pondered curiously. How was he able to catch her pen? Those were some fast reflexes. Dirk walked up the stairs that led to higher desks. These desks looked like those of a college lecture hall. From Dirk's count, he found that at least 70 kids would be able to fit in this room. He took the desk at the highest level and sat on the edge closest to the staircase. Not long after he sat down, more kids started to pile in. They came in groups of three or four, and the classroom quickly got noisy. The teacher simply herded them to the desks, telling them that they could pick whatever seats were open. As this happened, Dirk sat with his eyes closed and trained his man alongs a bit. The process was more gentle though in an attempt to not disturb the surrounding mana too much. All right class. Settle down. My name is Ms. Adrisha, and I'll be your general ed teacher for the year. We're going to be learning about a lot of different things, but don't worry about getting thrown off. We'll be doing this in sections so it'll be easy to keep up. All right, each of you should have three books in front of you. Go ahead and open the history book and turn to the first section. We'll take a little glimpse of all the things we'll be learning about this year. All the students followed directions and listened to the teacher as she outlined all the books and what they would be focusing on. There were three books at the seat of every student as well as a bag to hold them in. The first was the history book, second was the world studies book, and third was mathematics. These were the same subjects that Dirk learned about in the children's school, but he knew they would hold different information here. After a while, the teacher was done going through the history book. Just from the introduction, Dirk could tell how much more information was in there. It was more in-depth and held more specific details unlike in the children's school where everything was vague. It also talked about the general history of the world, including other nations. Next, they opened up the World Studies book. In there, it talked about not only other nations and their cultures but also the dungeons and how they operated. This book held a lot more information that Dirk actually wanted. If he was to dungeon dive in the future, he wanted to know what the hell dungeons were. Lastly there was mathematics, but the teacher didn't touch upon that a lot. By the time they were done, there were only five minutes left in class. Everyone simply hung around and discussed stuff until the bell rang, where they all rushed out and moved to their next class with their new books in hand. Dirk hoisted his book bag and walked out as well. His next destination was the gymnasium. It only took a couple minutes to arrive. After walking in the doors, he found he wasn't the first one. A bunch of kids were hanging around the place, talking and laughing about whatever they had on their minds. However, there were surprisingly few. Only forty kids were present, and Dirk didn't see any more people trickling in. He simply walked over to one of the walls where there was a bench and sat down. In this gym, there were two other large rooms that were used as lockers and for changing. Dirk made a mental note to start bringing a change of clothes. Huh. Oh. Dirk. Suddenly, there was an excited shout. Dirk's head snapped to the noise, and he saw a cute girl with small antlers coming off her forehead. Hello, Ava, 